It doesn't matter which diet or which nutrition approach you're following right now. This food will screw up your weight loss efforts more than any other. That's because number one, it has an appallingly high calorie content. Number two, it's just so damn Moorish, to be honest. One of those foods that when you introduce it, it's really hard to stop eating regularly. The slippery slope is real with this one. Now, there are many foods that fit this criteria. Small volume, high calorie, pretty Moorish, right? There's a couple of things this could be, right? But why I've chosen this particular food to slander, let's say today, is because it's widely considered a health food. The audacity, right? Any guesses then? <laughs> Granola, that's right, a wolf in sheep's clothing. Half the packet's gone everywhere. A lot of people have misconceptions about this stuff. Now, admittedly, there's a spectrum of granola products available, especially here in the UK. Some are frankly better than others, uh, with them having minimal added nasties, let's say, or from a weight loss perspective, some products that are lower in calories, of course, than others. But even at the healthier end of that spectrum, you're still looking at a food that frankly has an appalling calorie to satisfaction ratio. Let me demonstrate with Lizzie's treacle and pecan granola. This is better in my opinion than the average granola product, but it still comes stacked in calories. Let me read you the ingredients list here. What I do like about this, by the way, is that it's GMO free. You're looking at whole grain oat flakes, rapeseed oil, various seeds, desiccated coconut, fructose, pecan nut pieces, black treacle, chicory fiber, natural flavoring. Not good, but not terrible by any means, but it's still a whopping 499 calories for 100 grams of this stuff. So this is what 200 calories of our Lizzie's granola amounts to. Not a great deal, is it? It's a pretty sparse amount for 200 calories. Let's compare that now to 200 calories worth of rolled oats. And I'm gonna have George come and show you here. Just look at that difference. Isn't that wild? And it's worth saying that volume isn't the only thing that dictates fullness and satisfaction, but that's such a stark difference. Which one of those do you think is gonna fill you up for longer? And to further illustrate, let's have a look at another traditional cereal option, right? Corn flakes. These are admittedly pretty clean corn flakes, just maize, a uh, little bit of dried rice syrup, salt, rice bran extract, pretty darn clean as corn flakes go. 200 calories worth. Again, look at that volume difference. You get the picture. Even a healthier than average granola still gets trounced by the other options here in terms of caloric density. But let's also consider the oil, the added sugars in this stuff. They make it insatiable. It's so rich and sweet and fatty all in one go. Is this really something you wanna be flirting with on a regular basis if you're trying to give your taste buds a chance to adjust to natural, healthy flavors? So even if you ignore this little demonstration about calorie density here, let's say each of these, we'll get rid of some of the cornflakes, some of the oats, let's say each of these piles has 200 calories and the calorie density is exactly the same, I would still argue that these are going to give you way more bang for your buck in terms of fullness and satisfaction than the granola because of all this, all the added nasties on here getting that palate fired up. This all rendering our granola here, well, to put it mildly, less than helpful from a weight loss perspective. Now, of course, if you're only using a small amount and it's part of an otherwise excellent diet that puts you in a calorie deficit every day, then you can absolutely lose weight eating a granola product like this. But my thinking has always been, if you're trying to lose some weight and therefore have a limited amount of calories that you can eat every day, why not make the sources of those calories give you as much bang for buck as possible, as much fullness and satisfaction per calorie as possible. And I'm speaking from experience with this stuff too, man. There was a time one summer when I just started lifting weights, I was 18 or 19 years old, when I was pounding this stuff down in industrial quantities. I used to watch the TV show Lost, remember that show, classic, uh, and I'd go through a bowl of granola every time I watched an episode of Lost. Uh, it was just a really bad habit that I built. And that was, that's probably five or 600 calories at the time on top of an already pretty atrocious diet. But nowadays, having learned the hard way, my breakfast usually consists of oatmeal with fruit and seeds. I'll put uh, some footage of this morning's breakfast on the screen for you. And that's a much better option, right? It's a much better option. It fills me up for longer, lowering calories, 
That's what I like to do nowadays. So I'm not saying you can't ever eat this stuff again, but you need to be really, really careful with it.